Hi, I'm Dr. Anna Marie. We're doing a Greenovation evaluation of Terra Verde. We want to figure out exactly what our challenges are going to be to turn this place into an energy efficient place and also at the same time have a healthy indoor environment. Now I'm pretty sure we're going to have quite a list of challenges to face. This place is pretty much untouched since it was built back in 1972. So let's go play detective with the Green Analysis team. Hey guys, how you doing? Great. I don't have any energy bills to share with you. I just bought this place. Nobody's lived in it for about, oh gosh, almost since 2001. The windows, they rattle when it's windy out. Yeah, I can see that you have a problem definitely with your windows, Anna Marie. This is something every homeowner can try. If your window is tightly sealed and in good condition, you shouldn't be able to pull a paper through it like that. What are we replacing these old single panes out with? We're replacing these mill-finished aluminum um, high performance in 1973 windows, uh, single glazed, very poorly weather stripped at this point, with uh, state of the art for today, composite framed, dual glazed, low E glass, uh, weather stripped very effectively. Okay, we didn't even make it out of the room and I got slammed for the incandescent light bulbs and the fan fixture. Definitely a no-no. Did you know these bulbs consume more energy and create a significant amount of heat compared to new options like CFLs? Wow, Jim. Amory thought we'd get out of this room without finding anything else and here's another point that's easy for homeowners to make a difference. Right, adding a filter in the return air duct will cut down on the pollutants and keep the indoor air cleaner. Okay, I've moved on to the washer and dryer. I'm not seeing anything energy efficient, no energy store, nothing on it. Well, these were here with the house, Anne-Marie, and a lot of people run into that scenario. One of the things you can do is just open the lids of your washer and dryer, take a look at the serial number, model number, and make. Enter those in on the internet and it'll give you a lot of information about where and when these first came into existence. Jim, I think you actually checked this out already, right? Right, this um, washer is, was manufactured in 1990. I guess not a good idea to put into the tack room for the horses, is it? No, when something's not energy efficient, the mistake that a lot of people make is they get themselves a new energy efficient appliance to save money and then they move their existing appliances somewhere else. All you've done there is just move the energy cost to another room of your home. So that wouldn't be the best idea. During the construction, I have been using these washer and dryers just to kind of keep things laundry going well on site. And um, you suggested that we should be also checking out the, uh, the vent and the dryer since it is currently being used until our new appliances get here, correct? Yeah, absolutely. One of the big things that you need to make sure that you do. Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Cleaning your lint. All right. Who on the crew hasn't been do using the uh, dryer? Clean the dryer vent out. That's not good. All right. <laughs> now, this isn't good, Emory. You need to clean your lint trap between every load. The other thing that people forget to do is the actual hose behind your dryer needs to be checked about every six months. Make sure that it's clean. That's going to help your indoor air quality quite a bit. Yeah, another great uh, do-it-yourself tip to make your home a little greener, save water consumption, is simply to unscrew uh, the aerators or non-aerators that you might have on faucets. Don't ever forget the one in the laundry room and to just change it out with a current aerator. That's going to save on the amount of water that comes through that faucet, going to make it a little better. If you have already have an aerator, make sure it's clean. This one, it needs to be replaced. 